Mr. Seligman, Seligman's testimony asserts that the federal government didn't threaten or coerce the so social media platform. Says, says the, the uh, Attorney General's complaint that you're litigating in federal court lacks a reasonable legal and factual basis. He didn't mention, as I understand it, just last week, the United States District Judge in that case denied the administration's motions to dismiss. Doesn't that denial mean the opposite of what Mr. Selig Seligman testified? Get, turn on your mic. Is your mic on? Our federal district judge came to the opposite conclusion. Yeah. So, I mean, that conclusion is that the complaint plausibly alleges, but it gives plausible factual allegations in support of a legally sufficient legal theory that this censorship scheme, in fact, violates the First Amendment. Um, can you summarize some of the uh, allegations of fact concerning coercion and threats that you tendered to the court to, rent, to lead to that conclusion? Yes, and I'd, I'd preface that by saying, in fact, there's more than one way you can violate the First Amendment. There's coercion, there's joint participation, there's conspiracy, there is deception, there is pervasive entwinement, and there is significant encouragement. So even if we hadn't alleged threats, it would in no way undermine our claim that there's a First Amendment violation. But there's overwhelming evidence of threats. Uh, and if, if I may, I can summarize some of those. So, give you a little bit of time on that, yeah. Uh, obviously, one of the things we've alleged is that the threats about antitrust liability and Section 230 repeal or replacement, those on one side are tied to demands for greater censorship. It's one thing for a federal official to say, we should repeal or replace uh, Section 230 immunity. It's quite otherwise for them to say, you'd better censor private American speech on social media or we will take that action against you. Right. It's the threat linked to the demand, which is what violates the First Amendment. And the case law is abundantly clear on this, and the evidence of that is overwhelming. But that's not all. We have all kinds of other threats. For example, in the Elvis Chan deposition, it was revealed that Congressional staffers had been flying out to Silicon Valley to privately meet with the social media platforms since 2017, bringing proposed legislation with them to threaten them with adverse legal counsels if censorship didn't improve. And what Mr. Chan, the government's FBI agent, testified is that this was effective. How they experienced the pressure. It made a huge difference. It censored. How many FBI agents did Twitter say interacted with Twitter? Uh, 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 I can't remember off the top of my Numbers head. Numbers in the 80s, isn't it? Uh, uh, isn't it 80-something? Certainly the Fed Foreign Influence Task Force and includes about 78 to 80 agents, I believe, and then there's another eight in, uh, in San Francisco office alone that are involved in these activities, so I, many. I, I know your written testimony contains hundreds of pages of these allegations, so it's interesting. Mr. Seligman, uh, you, uh, you refer to yourself as a professor. Now, you're a fellow at the Constitutional Law Center at Stanford Law School, isn't that right? That is correct. And, and you're not on the faculty at Stanford Law School. That's right, and I didn't claim otherwise. Okay. Um, it, you graduated from law school in 2011. Your LinkedIn uh, resume suggests you've, you haven't had any job longer than about three and a half years since then. As I, I looked on Lexis. I couldn't find any case in which you've served as counsel of record in which you've finally prevailed. Can you name one? Uh, I've worked on legal teams that have prevailed at every level of the federal judiciary, including the Supreme Court. Can you name a case? States. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, Tyson v. Buafakio, which is a case at the Supreme Court. Tyson versus what? Uh, Buafakio was a case. Uh, it was a case about Rule uh, 23 class certification. Okay, we prevailed. Okay. What reason is it? So you're not a professor. You're not, do you claim expertise in the First Amendment? Do you claim to be a First Amendment expert? I am an expert in constitutional law, including the First Amendment. Yes. Interestingly enough, on, on your uh, website, on the Stanford website, says you're an expert in election law, but you're, we have, you also have broad uh, research interest in constitutional law. It doesn't even mention First Amendment. Uh, as many legal scholars do, I have a diverse set of interests. Mr. Sauer, uh, wouldn't it be squarely in conflict with the First Amendment to censor Mr. Seligman's opinion just because it conflicts with the official narrative as represented by the district court judge's opinion? Absolutely. The First Amendment protects everybody. Um, can you take in the last few seconds I've got and talk briefly about how the Election Integrity Project and the Virality Project have moved to censoring whole narratives? Yes, there's, uh, uh, I see that time is almost up, but there is, a, there is a concerted effort that we see in the evidence to censor narrative at a narrative level, where a narrative can contain hundreds of thousands of social media posts, and that is operated out of Stanford University. Thank you. How much time has expired? Gentleman from Texas.